All right, so second day of 8.3, we want to continue solving for missing side lengths in triangles, in right triangles, using trigonometry. So if we go to the back side of your 8.3 notes, here we are on the back side of our 8.3 notes, we have a problem up here that is a lighthouse. Okay. This is pretty cool stuff in my opinion. This is called indirect measurement. We did some of that with similar triangles back uh, last semester. But uh, indirect measurement, like we said before, is measuring something indirectly, obviously. That means you're not actually going to climb this lighthouse to find out how tall it is. Okay, you're going to do uh, use some math to figure out how tall this is so that you don't actually have to climb the lighthouse. So. What are they doing here? Well, they measured from wherever we're standing, or actually in this case, it's the end of a shadow, if you can kind of see that picture. They have a length of a shadow is 100 feet. Okay? And then they use a uh, measuring device to measure this angle is 62 degrees. Okay? If you remember back, uh, we called that the angle of elevation from going to the horizontal up. Okay, so we have uh, a 100 foot shadow, we have a 62 degree angle of elevation. We want to find out how tall is this lighthouse. Well, the very first thing I would do here, because I don't have enough information on my side lengths to use the Pythagorean theorem, I don't have a special right triangle, so I can't use either of those methods to solve for H. I have to use trigonometry. So I write down SOHCAHTOA. Okay, I write down SOHCAHTOA. Now I look at the diagram and I say, relative to my acute angle I know, relative to that 62 degree angle, H is what I'm solving for. So which side is that? Opposite, adjacent, or hypotenuse? H is opposite the 62 degree angle. So I'm gonna be using O, okay? Well next, 100 feet, is that opposite, adjacent, or hypotenuse? to that 62 degree angle. Adjacent. It is adjacent. Okay, so I'm using O and A. O and A. You look up at Sokotoa, which item uses O and A? The tangent does. Tangent uses O and A. So we're gonna have the tangent of our angle. Well, our angle is 62 degrees. Please remember, tangent never sits alone. It has to have an angle measure with it. So tangent of 62 degrees is going to equal opposite over hypo or I'm sorry, opposite over adjacent. O over A. So that's going to be H over 100. H over 100. Okay, so how am I going to solve for H? Multiply both sides by 100, yep. Or remember, uh, on Wednesday I said we could treat these as proportions. Some of you got kind of confused on that come homework time. But if I treat this as a proportion, I don't want to flip the tangent in the 100. I want to cross multiply. H times 1 is H. And then I have 100 times the tangent of 62 degrees. That's exactly where I end up getting if I multiply both sides by 100. It's the same thing, just a slightly different way of looking at it. Okay? So we have 100 times the tangent of 62 degrees. Well, that's now calculator work. We go to our calculators and we type in 100 times tangent 62. Please make sure your calculator is set to degrees before you do those things. And they ask us to round to the nearest foot. So if we type that in, we should be getting approximately 188 feet. All right, let's try the next one. Right next to it here. It says, uh, we walk from one corner of a basketball court to the opposite corner. We want to write and solve a proportion using a trigonometric ratio to approximate the distance of the walk. All right, so essentially what's going on here, 
we have a right triangle we're solving for x now if you're not uh seeing which triangle i'm talking about we want to deal with this guy here in blue okay there's our right triangle so again our book must really like 62 degree angles but again we have a 62 degree angle okay and we are then dealing with looks like um x well which side is x of this triangle i heard hypotenuse yes so h is being used all right um 94 is the other dimension we're given which side is that relative to our 62 degree angle opposite all right so we have the hypotenuse we have opposite i'm going to quickly write down sokotoa Which of these ratios, sine, cosine, or tangent, uses the hypotenuse and the opposite side? Sine, right? The sine. Sine uses opposite and hypotenuse. So therefore, I want to write sine 62 degrees, because remember, sine does not go by itself. It has to have an angle with it. So sine of 62 degrees equals opposite over hypotenuse. So that's going to be 94 over x. And it has to be that way. You can't flip that around. It has to be the opposite over the hypotenuse. Okay. Now that we have this here, now again, think of it as a proportion. Think of it as a proportion. Do you have to do it this way? No, but trust me, folks, it's a little bit faster. Okay, there's a reason why we learn properties of proportions. It's because they make our lives a little bit easier at times. Okay, so treat it as a proportion. I got a fraction equal to a fraction. I'm trying to solve for x. It's gonna be awfully nice if x was not in the denominator here, if x was in the numerator instead. So I can go ahead and flip-flop a diagonal making x over 1 equal 94 over the sine of 62 degrees. Well, x over 1 is just x. So there we go. I've solved for x. I now know that x is 94 over the sine of 62 degrees. So we take our calculators and we type in 94 divided by sine of 62 degrees. Okay, um, and let's round this to the nearest foot as well, since the last problem was rounded to the nearest foot. So x is then approximately what? 106 feet. Rounding to the nearest foot, because remember the number is 106.47 blah blah blah, right? 46, excuse me. 46 blah blah blah. Okay. If I'm rounding to the nearest foot, that means I am rounding to the nearest whole number. And so I look at the number after it. That number is a 4, therefore this number stays the same. So it's 106. Please don't go down the rabbit hole of trying to round everything. A lot of times people will tell me, well, yeah, but Mr. Bobier, if I look at this number, this number is bigger than 5, so therefore this number rounds to a 5. And if that number is a 5, then this number rounds up to a 7. No, 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 no. Okay? You can't do that. You can't do that. Otherwise, all your answers in chemistry are going to be 0. Because you're dealing with stuff that's so small that everything rounds to 0. Okay? You can't do that. That's not how rounding works. You only look at one digit past what you're rounding to. Okay, one digit past where you're rounding to. So we only care about the four. It's smaller than five, so that number six stays the same. Please practice proper rounding. All right, questions on the basketball court? Yes. 